<laughs> oh! Yes, indeed, beautiful people around the world. The Keep Climbing family. Today is one of those videos. We got a spicy, good old season video today, y'all. Oh, man. Why other countries treat their people so much better. America compared. Oh, man. Today's video is going to get a little bit spicy. Yes, indeed. But hello to all my beautiful brothers and sisters around the world. My family and friends. I love y'all. I hope everybody is blessed, well, and healthy. And that nothing but the best is going on in all you beautiful people's life. Just here to spread that love, that positivity, that good energy. And to also check out something new, learn something new, hear something new with my beautiful family members around the world. And hey, we're going to continue to spread that love while we do it. Because hey, you never know what somebody is going through, what they've been through, what they're dealing with every single day. What they're battling with every single day in this crazy, evil, sick, corrupt world that we live in. And especially in these new times we're living in. It's, it's pretty messed up. You know what I'm saying? Yes, indeed, man. But um, your favorite American's back, and I'm still black. So let's check this one out, y'all. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Join the Keep Coming family. We're almost at 200,000 beautiful people in this family around the world, across the globe. Different skin colors, different countries. You know what I'm saying? Different backgrounds, cultures, ages are part of this channel. We're family. You know what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. I love y'all. But um, let's check this one out, y'all. Oh, man. Why other countries treat their people so much better? America compared. Man, oh, man. And I will leave the original link in the description box down below if you guys want to go check it out for yourself. But hey, let's jump right back into it. This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help me make more content like this, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash second thought. I'm going to say something that will probably offend many of my viewers. Let me preface this by saying that I, as an American, include myself in the following statement. Okay. Americans are quite possibly the most willfully ignorant people on the face of the planet. We have access to the sum total of all human knowledge, yet our understanding of the world rarely extends beyond our own country. And even then, the majority of Americans believe in a vision of the country that does not actually exist. It's not that we're stupid, we just tend to blindly accept that the US is the greatest place on Earth, and therefore don't see any reason to educate ourselves about the realities of the rest of the world. In this episode, we're going to pull back the curtain on how America actually compares to other countries, and consider why the richest country on Earth fails to treat its people with dignity and fairness. Ha! Huh. I'm going to provide a list of important topics, then for each item we'll compare the it's American be. experience with that of citizens from other nations. Hopefully by providing a side-by-side -side comparison, you'll be able to see the stark contrast between how most Americans see their country and how it really stacks up against the competition. To give you an idea of just how skewed the American perception of our country really is, let's start with a pretty shocking example. Compensation for what are considered low-skill jobs. We'll take the quintessential American company, McDonald's. McDonald's is the world's largest restaurant chain by revenue. It operates in over 100 countries and serves over 69 million customers every day. As of 2018, McDonald's was the second largest private employer. With Somebody riding through that drive-thru right now! You riding through that drive-thru right now. What you got, your number one large fry? Easy on the ice on your Coca-Cola? You done rolled through that drive-thru. You done been through that drive-thru four times this week. And it's only Tuesday. Oh, man. I tell y'all, man. Yes, indeed. Let me go back. Let me stop talking. You rolled through there and got you that McGriddle. Got you that Big Mac. Got you that. that and you didn't put extra cheese on it. Extra onion. Pickle. Nine million customers every day. As of 2018, McDonald's was the second largest private employer, with 1.7 million employees, behind Walmart's 2.3 million. How many times have you heard someone refer to McDonald's jobs or workers in a derogatory manner? Never. For some reason, Never. people who work at McDonald's are seen as inferior or lazy or have any number of other unfair and unkind assessments leveled at them. This probably stems from the old notion of flipping burgers being a job anyone can perform. 
But the animosity towards low-wage workers has grown significantly in the past few decades. And in America, McDonald's workers really do suffer a low wage. As of 2020, Thanks. the average crew member at McDonald's makes $9 per hour. The average McDonald's cashier makes $8 per hour. The federal minimum wage in the United States is $7.25, a rate- $7.25. I'm telling you, I remember I used to work at the Taco Bell. I said, lady, can, can y'all do better than $7.25? She say, Mr. Ricky, oh, Mr. Ricky, we'll give you $7.50. I, I say, what? I said, okay, cool. <laughs> it was my first job, y'all. I was in high school. I think I was a fr like a sophomore, freshman, no sophomore. It was my first job. I was just the age and old enough to get a job and finally start making some money on my own and doing what I got to do to make me feel like I'm accomplishing something in life and make me feel like, you know, I don't got to always ask my parents to buy me this and buy me that. I can actually work hard and get it and do it myself, you know, do it myself. You know, buy something by, by, by myself. Go get my own hook, buy my own shoes, buy my, do that. You know, I get to finally do something for myself. <sighs> yeah, you don't realize until you get, you know, as soon as you get to about that 17, 18 mark, you, you know, so for some people, we kind of hit that, 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 that light bulb, that click. It's a click. Everybody goes through that click. Some of us don't even go through it. But for the real ones, you go through it and you're like, man, you look at life, you see how the world is revolving. You see how people are running these businesses, how the government's ran, how just the world completely is run, how the currency, the dollar sign has completely everything. And you just see it all taking place in front of you and you'll understand what's really going on. Most people say it's called you open up your third eye, you're open, you're doing this and that. But once you realize what's going on, it's actually really up. It's very up. Yeah. You know? And we're not even going to get the taxes and, and and all that, you know, W-2 and 1099. And we're not even going to get into all that. Okay. But I'm going to just let the video play. I'm going to stop talking my good old speech out. I'm sorry, y'all. I get real I anxious, you know, because I know there's people out there right now busting their butt, man. And you're worth whatever they're telling you you're worth or whoever company, she, she, you're worth whatever they're saying you're worth. I believe everybody's worth way more than $500 an hour. Hell, way more than that. Everybody is special and unique in their own way. Everybody has a purpose, you know? Everybody is special and unique in their own way. You're way bigger than $9, $7 an hour, $100 an hour. You know, even though that's good money, but still, you know, $9 an hour, you, I mean, you can't even, you know, you, we ain't going to talk about it which has not been raised in over a decade and which should not be considered a reasonable wage for any position, considering the fact that a full-time minimum wage worker cannot afford to rent a two-bedroom apartment Sad. anywhere in the United States Nowhere. and can't afford a one-bedroom apartment in over 95% of U.S. counties. Nowhere. Now, the all-too-common response to data like this is something like, well, yeah, it's not a hard job. You should just find a better one. Here's a simple question. Should any job, regardless of technical skill required, pay workers so little that they cannot afford to rent even the smallest place to live? Not to mention other necessities like utilities, food, and medicine. Absolutely not. That is inhumane and cruel, especially coming from the second largest employer in the richest country on the planet. Other notable objections include, McDonald's has to make a profit. If they pay their workers more, they might go out of business. First of all, if you can't pay your workers a fair wage, your company should not be in business. Facts. End of story. End but of story. again, McDonald's is not struggling to make ends meet. In 2019, McDonald's raked in $21 billion in revenue. But no matter how obvious the exploitation of low-wage workers, Americans are hell-bent on praising the very companies doing the exploiting. Take this article on Reader's Digest, for example. It's titled, This is what McDonald's workers really get paid. You see that and think, oh, nice, finally some news showing how poorly these workers are compensated. 
Then you scroll down and nope, they're actually praising McDonald's, saying things like, the food chain is also great for paying their workers fairly, and McDonald's is one of the highest paying fast food chains in the United States. This level of sycophancy is insane. If eight or nine dollars an hour is some of the highest pay in the industry, that doesn't indicate that McDonald's is paying fairly, it indicates that a massive chunk of the population is being paid poverty wages. This is where taking an international perspective is so critical. If all you see is feel-good stories about how well McDonald's workers are paid, you'll never know how badly American workers are actually being treated. Let's take the same company, the same position, but in a different country. Here's a McDonald's in Denmark. The average McDonald's worker in Denmark, for doing the same low-skill job, makes $22 per hour. Whoa, well, whoa, hold on, whoa, you hear whoa, Reader's Digest whoa, scream from across whoa, the Atlantic. Whoa, 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 hold your horse, Sally. Get off that horse. Get down up off that horse, Sally. Get off off that horse. $22 an hour in Denmark working at Mickey D's. And I bet you the food tastes way better, too. I bet you that food, I bet you that Big Mac tastes way better than it do down here in the in, in United States. Oh, so you're telling me I go apply for a job up the street because there's literally like five McDonald's up the street from my house right next to each other. And they gonna give me they might give me eight dollars an hour. You know, I'm gonna be struggling. Can't pay this. Can't pay that. Then on top of that, I gotta work two weeks to receive my first pay to, to receive a, a paycheck to begin with. I gotta work two weeks, so I don't even get my check into two weeks. And I'm only making that amount. But you go over to Denmark, and I'm making twenty-two dollars an hour. Twenty-two. You know, with twenty two, you can you can afford a car and and and, and somewhat a nice little little joint to live. You know, twenty two, twenty two, man. That's why I tell y'all, man, you got to do your research. You got to travel. You got to go out. You got to learn. People are living completely different life, man. Outside, across the world, outside of your country, whatever you're at, outside of America, people are living completely different life. Things are cheaper. Work is better. Things taste different. You know, the people are more different and more friendly and more nice and caring and loving. But then again, there's always negatives and, and you know, there's pros and cons to everything. You know, McDonald's workers in America get paid vacation days after just a year of work. Wow, enticing. In Denmark, when you're hired at McDonald's, not only are you making nearly three times what you would make in an American Mickey D's, you also instantly have access to a full year of paid family leave and a pension. No slaving away for a year to prove your value to the company. You're hired and you're treated fairly. Simple as that. McDonald's what? can afford to compensate all their workers like this, but they won't because U.S. laws allow them to exploit American workers to the point where they're basically slaves, earning the bare minimum to survive, paying oh! all of their income, and often going into debt just to pay rent, we and having slaves. no way to escape this vicious cycle We are slaves! because they're working such long hours. This is the case across all of America's low-wage jobs, of which there are many. The plight of the low-wage worker is incredibly dire, and all you have to do to understand that is look at how those same workers are treated in other wealthy countries. Let's move on to another topic, work-life balance. Fair wages are definitely part of this equation. If you're paid fairly, you don't need to work a second job, which will free up your time to be spent elsewhere. But we're going to focus on other metrics, specifically the length of the work week, vacation time, and parental leave. Let's start with the US. Most Americans would say that 40 hours per week is full time. That seems to be the general consensus. But, in keeping with the country's exploitative labor practices, the hilariously named Fair Labor Standards Act does not actually define what qualifies as full-time. That's left up to the employer. Okay, why does this matter? Well, think of your past part-time jobs. Did you get any benefits? Healthcare? 401k? Probably not. 
Most benefits, when they're offered at all, are reserved for full-time employees. Companies don't want to provide benefits because they affect their bottom line. America is all about cutting costs, and providing workers with fair compensation is a cost. So, imagine you apply for a full-time job at Best Buy. You're offered the job, but they tell you they only have part-time positions, but they can give you almost full-time. They make it sound like they're doing you a favor, yeah. offering you more hours than normal part-time. But this is just another example of employers exploiting their workers. If you work 37 hours per week, you're essentially a full-time employee, but they don't have to provide you any sort of benefits. No healthcare, no vacation, nothing. This okay. is a common practice. Companies will hire people, but keep them just below the threshold for full-time to avoid providing fair compensation. Huh. I've seen it happen. I used to work at Best Buy and they would do it all the time. And that's just the companies who are still trying to appear generous. Others will simply not offer benefits at all, or set their full-time positions at 50 or 60 hours per week. Sales positions are notorious for this. They'll often say, well, we expect you to work 40 hours, but all the top sellers are working 60 to 70 hours per week. This is coercion. They're trying to pressure you into working more hours to benefit them, and the compensation is never what they claim it will be. By allowing employers to define full-time work, American workers are held captive by corporations, forced to either work absurd hours to qualify for full-time benefits or find a second job to help cover the cost of things like health insurance. A second job. Both of these options lead to a terrible work-life balance, and as real wages have decreased and benefits have been offered less and less over the years, huge numbers of American workers have developed an unhealthy work-life balance. Yeah. For example, in 1960, when workers had real bargaining power, only 20% of American women worked. Today, 70% of children live in households where both parents are working full-time. Where full -time. does all this lead? As of 2020, over 85% of American men and 66% of women work more than 40 hours per week. Yep. We work 137 more hours per year than Japanese workers. To Salute to all my hard workers out there, man. Some of y'all working hard right now, man. Two, three jobs, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 90 hours a week. Tired. Tired. Tired, man. My daddy died on the way to work, man. Feel me? He died on the way to work, bro. And that's quite frankly some of our some 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 of the stories um that will just never stop. It's gonna be some of us that's gonna die on the way to work as well, too. You probably got family members and loved ones that then died on the way to work too. Then died at work. You know? This videos like this break my heart, man. You know, the facts break your heart. And this is why I'm wishing the best in everybody's life, man. Y'all live the life you deserve, man. If you can find a way out, if you can find whatever works for you, go for it. You want to achieve this and this? Go for it. Take risks. Believe in yourself. Create your own business. Do what you want to do. It's never too late. Could give it. Could give a damn what, what you know. What age you are, where you're from. Go for it. It's never too late, y'all. We are tired. We're slaving, man. You know? It's rough down here, y'all. 260 more than the British, and 499 more hours per year than the French. Why do other countries have such a better balance? Because many of them have laws that cap the length of the full-time work week. Companies are required to pay their workers fairly and allow enough time off for employees to maintain a healthy work-life balance. That's not the case in the US. Vacation time is a similar story. Whereas many other countries mandate that employers provide paid vacation and sick days, the US does not. In every industrialized nation, workers get more paid vacation days and holidays than in the US. Here's a depressing graph to illustrate just how poorly we treat our workers. France 31, Spain 34, Austria 38, America 0. Zero paid vacation days, zero paid holidays. And remember, these are the mandated figures. Every Austrian worker gets a minimum of 38 paid days off per year. Even in the worst possible employment situation, they'd still get 38 paid days off. Hmm. In the US, many workers are lucky to get Christmas or Thanksgiving off at all. <laughs> and the odds that it's a paid holiday? Next to zero. Let's move on to our final comparison, paid parental leave. 
Many Americans aren't even aware this is a thing, so let me explain. When an employee of a company has a child, sometimes they're offered parental leave, a period of time where they can stay home from work to bond with and take care of their new baby. This greatly benefits the employee, the child, and in the long run, the company, because the employee will be happier, less stressed, and more loyal to the company. Of course, offering paid parental leave doesn't benefit corporations in the short term. And if there's one thing that encapsulates the American business philosophy, it's short-term gains over all else. So it won't surprise you to learn that the US is the only industrialized nation on the planet that does not mandate some amount of paid parental leave. This may be shocking to my American viewers because being able to get paid to spend time with your newborn child sounds like an impossible dream in our dystopian labor market. And honestly, it probably is impossible in our current America. We're so invested in self-destructive capitalism that even suggesting the possibility of paid parental leave would put US politicians out of a job. That's not the case in the rest of the industrialized world. In fact, every other OECD nation, and even in many third world countries, new parents are guaranteed at least several weeks of leave. Let's take a look at a few of them. Ethiopia, a country with an annual gross national income of under $900 per person, offers 90 days of leave with 100% pay. Madagascar, 14 weeks at 100%. Afghanistan, 90 days. Denmark, 52 weeks. Norway, 56 weeks. France, 16 weeks at 100% pay for your first child, up to 26 weeks for your third, on top of 104 wow. unpaid weeks. Man. Lithuania, 52 weeks at 100%, plus an additional 52 weeks at 80%. Again, the United States does not mandate a single day of paid parental leave even for the mother, and the father is never considered. This means that workers in America have to choose to either pay the exorbitant cost of childcare or have one parent quit their job in order to take care of the child. These are both bad options, which often lead to economic precarity. Yep. But that doesn't matter to the companies employing American workers. Profit is the only thing that matters. Sad, man. Right on the nose. Profit. How can we make a f profit? Hopefully seeing these labor practices compared like this has made it clear that not only is the US not living up to its claim to being the greatest nation on earth, but also that it consistently ranks poorly and often dead last in terms of labor metrics. Why is it that the wealthiest, most powerful nation on earth can't pay their workers a fair wage or provide health care, vacation time, or paid parental leave? You should realize by now that it's not that they can't, it's that they won't. Everything in America is beholden to the almighty dollar. Profit is the only motivator. If an action does not produce a greater profit, it will not be considered. Over the last few decades, Americans have watched as our livelihoods, our quality of life, and our dignity have all been stripped away by those who already make obscene amounts of money. Those in power say we're all in this together, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The ultra-wealthy and the world's largest corporations rely on Americans remaining ignorant. They rely on us accepting the lie that America is the greatest nation on earth, that it couldn't possibly get any better, all you have to do to shatter that lie is to take a look around the world. Other nations take care of their citizens. Even impoverished nations, or nations that we've bombed into oblivion, take better care of their people than the US does. American workers need to relearn the language of class struggle, and work together to break the wheel of the capitalist machine. If we want to claim work that together. the United States is the greatest place on Earth, we need to make it that way. Starts with us, man. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this kind of content is supported <sighs> what Americans call benefits, Europeans call standards. He should have have bought up that a Big Mac in Denmark is only 35 cents more expensive than the U.S. Clearly meaning the high wages barely brought up the price, meaning McDonald's is able to pay higher wages.
It's strange to see what has happened in America over the past 40 years. My father raised eight kids on a single salary. My father raised eight kids on a single salary with the General Motors, a union plant. We weren't rich, but we had a nice house, two cars, and we all graduated from college. I believe two things are different now. One is that corporations, billionaires have purchased the election since of Reagan. The Republicans paid by the wealthy have voted to restrict unions and slowly take away very social supportive programs that currently vote against voting rights in districts who are in difficult times. They also vote for tax loopholes for the already wealthy. What I don't understand is why the middle class or poor vote for people who, oh man, who have opposite goals than they do. Why would a poor person vote for a billionaire who has not, has done nothing but cheat others to get richer? We are destroying our middle class and are becoming a country of billionaires. And many of the paper people keep saying, please, sir, can I have another? Hopefully the young can do what their parents didn't and fight for themselves against the greed of pure capitalism. Oh, man. Yeah, this is a tough video to take in, man. It kind of just gives you anxiety. You know, it gives you anxiety just just seeing what's going on. You know, and um, this video is kind of recent, not too, too recent, you know, but kind of recent. So, but, you know, things are even worse now than when this video was dropped three years ago. So. I'm gonna let y'all take this one in. Comment down below if you have any information, details of how this video, uh, you know, how this made you feel. Are you triggered as well too? And how are you living your life? I mean, I'm talking to everybody, not just us Americans. I'm talking to everybody, man. Y'all comment down below, show some love. I love y'all. We wishing the best in everybody's life, man. Go live the life that you deserve. Um, over here where I'm at, it's not easy, man. You know, so. We just live in a fight another day, baby. I love y'all, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.